Hello. This is a video response to Kick-Ass Witch, who I have discovered recently and am just having the time of my life, enjoying all her videos and her enthusiasm and her wisdom. Um, she's rekindled a spark in me that has just kind of had me going for the last couple of days. And I wanted to just comment on a couple of things that she has said in her new blog, Kick Ass Witch, and where she's given us our Hippie Witch uh, ebook, which is wonderful, just absolutely beautiful. And one of the things that she talked about in that was sexy talk. And I had shared with her in a voice memo because I wasn't courageous enough to step out and actually make a video. So this is um, it's part of her urgings to say that she wanted to, would like to see me do that. And I'm stepping out of my comfort zone totally. And uh, having, you know, embracing the fear that goes with exposure. I um, put my earrings on. I haven't worn earrings in two years. I figured my ears would all be, holes would be plugged up. But there weren't. It was just so beautiful. I was able to take my, my, my little, you know, tentacle earrings and put them right in and I was just amazed and I thought okay this is all time signals uh, synchronicity of everything coming together anyway she was talking um, you know, Joanna was talking about sweet uh, about sexy talk about being sexy talk like Barbara Streisand hello gorgeous and I uh, realized that her sexy talk is what I call my sweet talk and that was one of the biggest discoveries I've ever made. One of the real truths of my uh, life that was life-changing is when I learned how I spoke to myself and the impact it was having on me. I came from, you know, the typical abusive child where you got a lot of name-calling and all that. And I had a very abusive brother who was always calling you stupid and dumb. Okay, I had a phone call in between and it cut off. I learned something, I just learned something, that if you receive a phone call and they leave a voicemail, it cuts off on your video. Whatever you've done, it's gone. So anyway, I'm going to try to pick up and patch it. Um, so I came from a, a childhood where I had a very abusive brother who was into name calling of all kind as just one part of the abuse. And um, what I did is I seemed to learn that as a pattern. Even my mother would call me dumb bunny, dumb bunny. And that. So it's kind of like those sounds that you hear, those names that you hear as a child, just kind of stick with you so that whenever you do anything that doesn't seem to be perfect, you end up calling yourself those same names that you received uh, when you were a child. And uh, when I realized how that I was carrying on that lesson, the, what I had learned from them and doing it to myself, which is really incredibly more abusive I think because if anybody should be on your team if anybody knows anything um, about you and the way you are it's you and that's what I thought and I I thought gee basically you know uh, there's so anyway I realized I needed to just change some of that uh, talk and um, I did this whole thing and then the phone kind of did that so I'm hoping I'll have to patch this together and make sure I don't repeat myself because I don't know how much got cut off. But when I realized what kind of talk that was that I was doing to myself and how I never would speak, I never spoke to my children like that. I would never speak to anyone like I spoke to myself. I would n and I never speak to animals. I'm, when I when I I rescue and have a cat sanctuary, and when I rescue animals, I am very patient with them. I can go out and feed a stray cat for maybe eight months, talking gently to it, and encouraging and trying to build trust. And um, because they're feral, they need to trust. And in a way, I think I was feral, and I needed to learn to trust, but I needed to learn to trust myself that that I would not receive the kind of treatment I received from um, others. After all, um, I, I know, I know how painful that is, and then to keep piling it on 
on your own self is just incredibly abusive. So I really look at that as inner child abuse. And I catch myself the moment I see myself going back to that pattern. I've almost broken it totally. But every once in a while, and when I catch it in someone else, you'll hear them when they say, I'm so stupid. And I'll stop and I'll say, please don't do that. Please, if you had any idea what you're doing to a part of your soul when you do that. And so I became a sweet talker. And I'd like to encourage you to be a sweet talker or a sexy talker. And how my sweet talk looks to like is sometimes I'll say it in my head, but most of the time I'll say it out loud because I you know, have a lot of time uh, where I'm by myself. And it'll, it'll look like, oh, sweetie, you did really good today. You worked hard. I'm really impressed how you went for almost doing everything that you wanted to get done. I know you didn't get it all done, and I know you didn't do it as well as you kind of hoped you would, but boy, you made an effort, and I really think that's super. And we've got tomorrow. We can do that. So sweet talk. I'm a sweet talker now. And... Um, that has made an incredible amount of difference. I just reviewed my video from that I'd made earlier today, and I noticed a big part was cut out during the phone call and the voicemail that went there while I kept talking. And I realized what had been left out was how I came to find out that uh, how to practice sweet talking. I'm uh, at home now with my... Recent rescues, five little kittens here. They're quite cute. <laughs> They're all quite cute. One just went on my lap there. But how I came to it was that um, I was in a meditation class for a couple of years, and we used to meet regularly every week and do a two- or three-hour meditation. And what I discovered one time is I had this experience of actually coming out of my body and viewing myself from what I would call my higher self. And in that perspective, I discovered something profound for me, is that my higher self watched my physical self from the time I was a small child. And it was like walking through the path of my life and was there and loved me so unconditionally and so uh, deeply uh, that I just felt overwhelmed with just what I would call pure love. But what was also something that I felt was the sadness that my higher self felt uh, in seeing me speak to myself so uh, abusively and calling myself names and no good and you don't deserve and all this kind of stuff. And it was like grieving to my higher self. And um, that was when I realized that I needed to change the way that I spoke to myself, that I needed to not only change this the way I spoke to myself, but I needed to change the way I treated myself and to start putting that love, that self-love that, that Joanna is talking about. I know what she's talking about. Um, the old, uh, I mean, the, the saying, love thy neighbor as thyself. It did not, It was loving yourself was a given. It wasn't like you were supposed to um, not, you know, love yourself. These little kittens are so adorable. They were going to be drowned by a mean person, so I got them. Anyway, um, I wanted to include that because that's act so uh, how I came to learn how to be a sweet talker. And so um, I'm going to pop back into the ending of my video from before. And um, I just wanted to complete this, and I didn't want to have any excuse for it. So um, I'll say... Uh, good night from this portion, and then I'll pick it up with the, the next portion. Oh, and by the way, this is uh, Audrey. She looks like Audrey Hepburn. She's so delicate and so sweet. So, either be a sexy talker or a sweet talker or however it is, but whatever you do, stop beating up that little inner child. And um, 
that's my first video and yay <laughs> bye